It is May 28th, 2022. It's Saturday morning. Um, <clears throat> I woke up back in my parents' house, or my grandfather's house, that my parents, whatever, when he died, next to only one of my children without access to the other three. I'm in the fourth decade of my life. I'm no longer able to breathe and sustain mobility in a, in a athletic, even being able to move in, into like an athletic r routine or regimen at this point um, because my health is failing so bad by some kind of septic occurrence that's going on between food and air and environment pollutants. Um... I'm thinking of how I entered the world, um, and I'm trying to be very mindful of other situations that might be going on at the same time. I happen to be in a capital city, um, or I don't, they don't call it a capital here, but I happen to be in a city limit, um, of high significance in worldly terms, um, being New York City, it's a well-known, I don't know, tourist travel destination, it's been mentioned amongst Hollywood, so at Hollywood top, like, grossing and, like, box office, it has significance and it's important, that, that's where it really matters the most for me at this point, um, I'm, I've had several things happen. I've had, I've been, like, held in a position that's very damaging and very difficult to explain, not knowing why, just, but I know others know why. Um, <clears throat> I wake up every morning, there's no work, there's no job. And now my health is deteriorating in such a rapid rate that it's even difficult to seek out job or work or career. Um, I've heard people say things like, well, change your mindset and change your mind. Like a gimmicky crap doesn't work and not for the situation. There's been no money. There's been, there's no retirement plan to fall back on. There's no life insurance plan to fall back on. All of that's been withheld from my person. I didn't even know others had access to that. Um, I'm finding out now by watching the television and what their op-ed is or their commercial is that they've done financial planning, they've done wealth planning, they've done estate planning, they've done college planning, they've done career development they have paths of multi-generational -genera success tracks for certain people. I have not been one of those fortunate. In fact, I've been quite the other. I have another thing is that I'm RH negative, which is an incredibly important at certain area, certain private area. So... It is um, difficult for me this morning watching this and then watching some of, like... I mean, it really feels like when you try to watch the television, watch what they're promoting, um, it's damaging in the effects of every day I wake up. It's this message again. Now, I went to a elementary school that was predominantly Quaker, and then there were visitors that entered for a school year or two and then were taken out, but in a one, like, ratio. So it was integrated enough for whatever. It was not totally segregated. Um, and so that passes some kind of litmus test for I don't know whom. Um, but then there's other years where, um, even though compliance was being met, they withheld 
money and opportunity from my father, which forced us back into city limits, which when I went back to city limits, there was, I was the only one, uh, and it was the flip side, and I was among, I was one of very few, um, but I was one of, I'm one of a kind anyway, and then there was a lot of what's not me, but more worldly territory, whatever, and integration, um, which is where I started in kindergarten, not because I wanted it, and in fact, I wrote essays saying I'd prefer never have to in, in, counter that life frame ever again of having to live the city, inner city, with this multi-diverse whatever. I never wanted to live it. I made that, I put that on written statement in like 1980-something. Pretty sure it was 1987. Um, but the humans have not, in management, have not honored that written declaration of my personal pursuit of happiness. They've, in fact, encroached on it, and they've done the complete opposite. In fact, they took that, and now they withheld my ability to pursue happiness. I see people traveling all the time. They make commercial for it, but yet I'm not allowed to. I see all these, and there's all of this black uprise and civil motion of their dreams being thrown at my face all the time. I mean, these are really aggressive actions in a mentally torturous state, after the physical world, when I go out there, I'm unable to maintain physical stature of what would keep me happy, being that I was supplied some kind of nourishment that wasn't toxic and poisonous, and I could keep my physical stature in the way that I prefer it to be, and that I'd be able to function in a manner that's a contributory asset instead of just having to look around and see that everything is being withheld. I see that everything's being withheld when I wake up every day. And then on top of that, to then look for outside source, which is FTC, FCC, and whatever regulated on state media, they keep pushing this narrative. Now, in my integrated school, they taught nothing about world politics. They taught nothing about American politics. They did not teach any of that. Not government, not the word government, not what it meant, not what it stood for, nothing. So when I turn on this TV and I see this civil engineered whatever they're doing, I was not part of this engineering project of where they're allowed to stand on top of my neck and throat and ability to get to where what would make me happy. They stand on some platform of you have free speech um, and that you can um, and that you have the pursuit of happiness. And then anybody that takes that away from you there's some kind of justifiable something or other. They don't, they're not really clear. But yet they've already encroached on my pursuit of happiness, my ability to get to the level of what I needed in self-sustaining measures and in breeding in a season that's very clear for a woman. When you're most beautiful, when you're most measurable, when you're most desirable, all of that was withheld. So here we are. Now I'm stuck looking at this right before, like, end of life cycle, which, I mean, like, I don't, the way that I'm moving right now in the atmosphere is so septic and so harmful and painful every day. I hope it is end of life. Um, <clears throat> so now I'm looking to see, they're pushing again this narrative of the American dream from some other group that's here in some format. I've made mention of it before when they made mention of it and now they're mentioning it again. It's almost like having a sledgehammer and having them hit you in the face with it every day. I really don't see the point. They did it once. The, the authority and the actual government does not agree with this narrative. The actual government 
did not allow the schools to portray this or to teach it to the students. So this narrative only exists for a very small, limited feature, which is easily wiped away, slate clean, and start over. I don't know when that day is going to finally come. Because the way that they're using this free voice and this sense of freedom is to pursue, hunt, and harm persons like myself who are in an RH negative category and desirable by a select few elsewhere that I needed to get to, but they withdrew my ability or they withheld my ability to get to that level of whatever. Whatever they decide to call themselves. So here we are again, another morning I wake up, another message from what's already in the area in a dangerous grouping, thinking that they have control of something. Meanwhile, when you're a big fish, there's usually a bigger fish somewhere that's watching over how your big fish is interacting with whatever you're responsible for. So this is EarthCam, and they're, today for me, when they're showing this, so the indication would be that this is May 28th, 2022, and this is taking place within the same time frame. That's the assumption. Monday, one of the nation's greatest monuments turns 100. The Lincoln Memorial immortalizes our 16th president and honors his role in saving the Union during a bloody civil war. But while the building was conceived as a shrine and a temple, it quickly took on another role as the nation's premier backdrop for demonstrations demanding social change. For a century, it's been the backdrop of monumental moments. Celebrations of our democratic ideals I have a dream. and promises to live up to them. He stood right here and gave a speech. On these steps, activist Talik McMillan echoed Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. from 1963. Back now, they have some narrative going on in the local area where they're like this super empowered group. I was looking for. Like, why do they think they're this super powerful group? They didn't want segregated schools. They wanted to be integrated. They took my freedoms away and made me go to an integrated school. So, um, and then later, an even more, like, disease-filled integrated school. Um, and I say disease-filled because I had a over six foot guy named Greg come up to me and tell me that he had a venereal disease. I had no idea what that meant. I'm like, why are you telling me this? He's like, I just thought you should know. I'm like, ew. I mean, like, this is the level of human in high school at St. John's that I graduated with. The King spoke about the check that bounced in the bank of justice. He spoke before marchers in 2020 after the killing of George Floyd. Given that same call for justice, um, it was powerful. Goose pimples. I got powerful. goose pimples. <laughs> Clear from here, all the way back, I could, couldn't see the end of where people stopped that. <laughs> and I had my mother sitting here screaming, <laughs> you go, you go. It was, it was a powerful moment. It was a powerful moment. So he's had powerful moments. He's had this great voice, this great education, this great time, this great opportunity in the same lands that I'm being held in some where all my pursuit of happiness and all of my hopes and dreams were completely withheld from my person. Same time. For nearly its entire 100 year history, this has been a focal point for civil rights demonstrations. Mike Litters, guard. So now I wasn't taught this. So now I have to look for an outside source because the actual government that governs over the Department of Education and what the children that call themselves Americans are allowed to learn have a very specific curriculum that is supposed to be taught to the children. 
I do not understand why the system was so broken when I entered it and when Linda entered it that the utmost care of our whatever, if, if integration was what was on the agenda, why was my education not at top notch? At least at the par of what got law degrees and doctor degrees and now sits in like some higher class than myself. At the same time that those people are in direct responsibility because I have had my Title IX and my pursuit of happiness withheld while they're all succeeding in multiple facets and multiple industry. Guards the National Mall and has been a park ranger for nearly 40 years. The first documented demonstration for civil rights takes place here in 1926, just four years after the memorial is dedicated. So now this is a nationally historic employee. So on this educational campus of the Lincoln Memorial, would he be considered like a NASA astronaut type credible witness as to what he was told when he shows up to his employee every day, what the facts, the faction wants disseminated to stay on one steady path? Because we didn't learn this in school. But if whatever comes up, there's multiple anchors of credible witnesses, incredible employment with incredible stories and suggestives by factions that were put in place to anchor in some social reality while this social engineering project is somewhere in the midst of I don't know what level of deaf confrontations they're at. Now, somewhere in the world, this is important. In this half hour with a celebration fit for a queen. Because she's been on a throne uh, with a responsibility at some level. I don't know if she calls it, because again, I have no interaction. I don't know if they call it global. I don't know if they call it worldly. I don't know if they call it family. I'm not quite sure where the responsibility is. But they keep mentioning her in this area while this civil unrest is going on and while I'm pinned in some incestuous whatever with everything I'd never wanted to even entangle with. Um, but she's been on a place of leadership, it looks like, for 70 years and now she's having a celebration of just how well she's done while I'm still in this really bad position and I don't see any help anywhere. Preparations are underway to mark Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee in London next week. British flags are on display across the capital as final rehearsals get underway for next Thursday's Trooping the Color Parade. And Sotheby's is putting dozens of royal portraits and tiaras on display, part of a month's worth of events to celebrate the Queen's 70 years as Britain's monarch. And this morning, we are getting a look at the Queen that we've never seen before. Roxana Saberi has the story. Rare glimpses from the Royal Archives. Now, when I was younger, first of all, my father, Louis, grew up in the Alps that looked very much like this. When I arrived, it was inner city at first, and then they moved me out to a place where this is Bear Mountain and certain things like that in the Catskills. Um, and the Adirondacks, that's what we did. And it was, it was all about nature, constantly. Um... Belmoral is a place one looks forward to very much. So a young Princess Elizabeth. I think that it has an atmosphere of its, of its own. Relaxing with her family on their Scottish estate. Narrated by the Queen, reflecting on her past families so often treasure that routines. Now I'm looking for some of these other quotes and one of them is talking about a noun 
that is uh, inside of this something called a State Department, they say, I'm quoting them, says it, and she sits in front of a label that says United States, and then it's separate, it has a president next to it, which for me, I mean, I thought that in this false narrative that you have one election, you elect the one guy which now is President Joe Biden, and he's the U.S. president. Why is an ambassador deputized almost in some secret, non-public fashion in the wrong messenger sitting at another private meeting and in charge of United Nations and Security Council information that's not publicized to people like myself or readily accessible. How did that get to be part of this democracy or republic that they speak of? Um, so they said that this woman, her noun is uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, was allowed a segregated all-black school, which means she doesn't know what went on in the white schools. It was withheld from her person. She's assuming they had better education and facility. Doesn't mean that they did. Um, and she also is stating um, that in this all-black segregated high school, um, she was exposed to foreign service who sent in a state department representative that opened her world to possibilities. Is that if she hadn't, if she had gone to an integrated school then, she wouldn't have had the same opportunity? I'm just curious, because they forced me into a, an integrated school, and I'm now in this really dangerous position, and this woman is leading something I have no access to, which affects me and my son. Um, now, the other thing is, open her world to possibilities. Now, that's Warner, W-E-R-N-E-R, -E -E at this place called Landmark, which is some kind of education educational program in New York City, uh, they use this that statement a lot about being a um, world of possibilities and endless whatever in their miseducating the public as if they have some whatever. Um, and that comes at an aerospace time of 3 7 dot dot one two. Uh, the Lincoln Memorial piece was at 1.08.51, and the Royal Jubilee piece of celebrating 70 years while I'm still here uh, is 1.02.03. Um, and then I'll rewind to a aerospace time of 30.13 uh, where the, they educate me on this U.S. Department of State, and she opens with what the U.N. Charter means, which was to, as she and she's a U.S. Ambassador, which, again, I haven't been given such a title or a schedule. Um, and <clears throat> they say uh, that the U.N. Charter was to prevent a war. That's really interesting which war exactly because she was able to go to a, a all-black segregated school which put her at an advantage. She also had foreign ministry or foreign service come and recruit her directly from in there and there was no representatives like myself that were in the room or in the know. So now it's some secret advancement, and now she sits in a really... And Lloyd's, Lloyd Austin's another one. I don't know what his career path was, but he sits in a really important U.S. Defense Secretary piece, which I don't know how he got there, but they have some integral players um, that were planted in places that have been in existence while this queen's enjoying her 70 years of success in, I don't know what area, 
and I've been withheld from the pursuit of happiness, the correct child-bearing partner, grooming for certain, and all the things that RH negatives are supposed to look forward to in some larger existential Hollywood-like family. Um, so let me put on the um, career piece that they're showing for this U.S. ambassador. Um, so this is what the piece looks like this morning. The U.N. Charter was written with the express purpose of preventing a war like the one President Putin just started. Okay. I understand that, and I can appreciate that. Where I'm having problem at Security Council is when my personal rights and freedoms have been withheld. I've been, without even being on social media, um... I've been hunted, I've been poisoned, I've been, I've had several murder attempts on my life because of the way time and space works at time travel. Um, while people at this level know a lot more than my person. They, in fact, probably know my entire life story before I even arrive at the day, which is why it's so crucial that my person be unharmed and moved to a better position rather than keeping me locked in this false imprisonment that they've put me in on this false narrative that never had to be, but now is. Um, to further, I don't know whose agenda. Um, and so now... Um, it was to prevent a war. That's interesting because it seems that humans and the people of whatever nation this is have been at war with me rather than working with me to get me to help with whatever they need to get to a better place and to get to where I need to be. Um, so I, like, maybe the battlefield doesn't look the same. But it's a whole nother classification of war. I mean, it's an integrated battlefield, which is a bad idea to begin with. But again, I'm not going into infectious disease and whatever um, and how things spread at an invisible level. I have training in it. I can speak upon it um, without any racial anything because it's microbiota. The way E. coli grows on an auger because it needs a special auger, and then how it has a sheen to it. It's bioluminescent. It's one of the only kinds that does that. It also gives off a really odoriferous, noxious, it's not pleasant. Um, but again, there I have many examples of that as well. The war has brought as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas-Greenfield is helping lead the country's many diplomatic efforts around the world, including our response to the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Her post at the U.N. is a one-mile straight shot east of our Times Square studio. That's where I recently met up with the ambassador for a chat about foreign policy, gun violence, and racial justice. That means that her post or her office that she enters every day is within New York City limits of where I'm now, I've now been moved back closer to the problem. And now my person is being, my health is affected in an even worse way than it was when I was in harm's way in Suffolk County. Right in the room where it happens. It has launched more missiles in the past five months than in the prior two years combined. Name an issue with worldwide implications. We are deeply concerned. And it winds up here. In the now, mixed with this, there's some Canada and China, China integration in global schools that went on. There's now some UN Security Council inside New York, which is a couple of hours by car, shorter ride by airplane. 
Um, and then this gets even more convoluted as to why she was allowed segregated schools, which I think is a blessing, and she was really fortunate. And then she was bestowed extra special responsibility on top of that, that I was withheld. Because I wrote that I did not want to be in integrated schools, especially if it was going to affect my future or my ability to whatever. Like if I was going to be frowned upon because I was in an integrated school, I didn't want to be in one. Stately room on Manhattan's east side. You're president of the UN Security Council. I am for the month of May. What does that feel like? It feels like a great responsibility. Leading the conversation on this 15-member council. The agenda is adopted. Is Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield, a 35 year veteran of the Foreign Service with posts in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa? I don't even know what Foreign Service means. I don't know how that opportunity is bestowed upon someone. I never had it offered to me. That's a problem, along with all of the other list of problems that I've encountered along the way. She was ambassador to Liberia and is known in these halls simply as LTG. LTG. <laughs> At the center of any given international crisis, the provision. Now she's sitting in front of a United States and then president, but she's just a United States ambassador. So why? Does she have, oh, and boxed water is better, is what it says right there. Oh, if that's not War of the Roses. That's War of the Roses. Because somewhere in whatever territory certain people are in, they don't have access to clean water. So now they are catapulting themselves through vicious efforts in order to get to places with access to water. And then other horrific circumstances have broken out. But again, it's just, these are, there's a battlefield. And usually, like, it's a sterile battlefield. But by the time I arrived, it's like every portal of problem is growing on the same battlefield. And I don't know why. They made mention of that in an Avengers, one of the Avengers movies. The original agenda for this meeting is maintenance of peace and security of Ukraine. The hottest conflict now on her plate is raging in Eastern Europe. Where are we with Russia? Four seats away. <laughs> are we in a stalemate, a state of war? We are not in a state of war with, uh, with Russia. Here in the Security Council, we are engaging with them on what is happening in Ukraine, but we're also engaging on what's happening in Syria. We're engaging on what's happening in Yemen. And what's happening in Syria and Yemen? There's been no mention of it whatsoever on the portal to elsewhere to try to understand what the heck's going on while I'm being withheld from money, commissary, um, currency, like whatever like stipend you need to self-support and self-sustain and have options and have movement, even little movement, I, or, and even to hold a residence, I haven't been able to have that under her job title doing whatever function this is, while other more important and pressing issues have been withheld from my person, so I don't even understand or, or know what else could be a contributing factor to personal security threats. And we have discussions around this. I mean, for me, this is a frivolous objective. It just is. Uh, table on all of those issues. She is also mobilizing the Western Alliance against its aggression. If her foreign service membership is Liberia, why doesn't she sit there at the UN Council with ambassador to Liberia? 
why is she the ambassador of the U.S.? Seems counterintuitive. Seems like it's helping the opposition in formulating and collating multiple prisoners of war and multiple missings in action that need to get somewhere. Today we call on Russia to stop its unprovoked, unjustified, unconscionable war. But diplomacy is hard work, especially when all five permanent members have veto power against UN resolutions. Now they're sitting in these positions and they're permanent, so there's no changes made? Then how do you, how do you take away the charter? Or, re, or how do you ratify the charter? We certainly have countries that are totally in accord with us. There are countries who are wavering, and then we have Russia and China. Russia and China. I mean, what do we call them at this stage? I call them a bromance. <laughs> Uh, not to be light about this, China has decided it will tie itself to Russia's aggression against uh, Ukraine, which is out of character for them. For now, the United States government is aligned, with Congress passing a bipartisan $40 billion Ukrainian aid package. And if Ukraine falls, then what? We're not going to sit back and allow Ukraine to fall. She left the State Department in 2017. Like, my whole thing is, is that I, if this is the face of the nation, I have a different face for a different nation completely. So if China and Russia thinks that this is acting in some deputized format, but meanwhile it has foreign relations with Liberia, that puts me in, again, it puts me in harm's way. Besides the fact of being kept out of the loop of the conversation of what the heck they're all discussing. And returned to become a formal member of President Biden's cabinet as UN ambassador. How often do you get to those cabinet level meetings? I attend every cabinet meeting. Her I have never been invited to one cabinet meeting. Not one. Don't even know what they look like. Don't know how they form. Don't know who's involved journey here began in the tiny segregated town of Baker, Louisiana. She was protected by her close-knit family. But that said, that must be so wonderful to have that level of protection. Ed, we have crosses burnt by the Klan in our community every single uh, weekend. I... Now, is that a confirmable fact or is that just like an alleged fact? Because I know that sometimes there's code words they throw out there for like gang related stuff to keep themselves safe at like private security. So like, again, I'm just not really sure. Is it like code for like, feel bad for me? Like I'm allowed to be here because I'm um, like, where's my level of that? Was bust uh, for 30 minutes past Baker High School to go to the Black High School. So we could see these schools and we knew they were better equipped. But what... And for some people, those things that they turn into some negative mark actually is effigy of like a protection spell of like, no, no, no. I had crosses burnt on my lawn. Like, I'm cool. Right, yeah. So this way, like, gang-related stuff leaves them alone because they think they're part of like a bigger acceptable operation. What they didn't have were the black teachers that we had who wanted to make sure that they prepared us for success in spite of racism. That is so, that means she had a better leg up. I mean, Lynn wasn't given that. Lynn wasn't like, you are going to do this. You are going to fight them and you're going to like succeed in life and we're going to give you every opportunity possible to like really have a great RH negative child and we're going to love her too and we're going to do our integrated thing. No, she grew up in segregation. She was blessed by some other facility and now she's in a power position at the same time that Linda was not given that same level of loving and coddling and upbringing. She was in an uprising in a staged coup. 
I we're victims here. But yet every day I wake up and the message is totally different because it's coming out of the microphones that just want more and more power and don't want my type of person to ever be heard. And so while it was difficult, I look back on it and realize that who I am today is because I went through that. You are your ancestors' wildest dreams. Um, I'm pretty sure in my case that doesn't exist. Because I'm pretty sure I could have had a much more pleasant 20s and 30s had I been brought to the correct ancestors. And they would have liked that dream a lot better than this nightmare that I was forced through. Hard-earned wisdom she's taken on the college commencement circuit. From Mississippi's HBCU to Blue College, global challenges, even those in faraway places, are going to impact you to predominantly white University of Wisconsin, where she attended grad school. We have climate change, we have migration issues, we have food insecurity, mass shootings, war. What would Don't forget water insecurity, because that's one of their leading more of the roses things in places they don't really talk about when it's integrated. <laughs> What was your message? It just feels like they have a segregated agenda and then an integrated agenda. And I'm really having a hard time with every aspect of what's going on. To, to young people in a way they could understand and connect. Well, first and foremost, they can't sit on the sidelines. I said yesterday at Columbia that we'd failed them uh, because we'd not addressed these issues. Oh, is that an admission of guilt? Great. Cleanup should be really easy. They've been prepared for it, and it's their time to address it. And matters of domestic importance are also part of her agenda. We spoke to her just two days after the grocery store massacre in Buffalo, New York. What do you think this says to the folks who are leading other nations, who are representing other nations? You know, it's interesting. So last night I started getting uh, text messages on the Security Council WhatsApp uh, group expressing condolences uh, to me and to the United States for uh, what happened. I think they understand that we do have a, a crisis in the United States. That but here's the thing. Are you the mouthpiece for the crisis? Because I really don't think that you're voicing my concerns the way that they need to be addressed. In fact, I'm pretty sure you're part of the silencing problem that's on this revolver. Racism exists. I've never denied it. I've acknowledged it here Should in not. New York in at the United Nations that, that we have, have an issue still with racism. We must face it down every time. What were you hoping it's to connect to your, to your colleagues? You know, my message is we're not perfect. We are not a perfect democracy, but we can acknowledge our weaknesses, and that's a strength to be able to acknowledge that you have an issue and work to address it. So let's work to address those issues and make our countries more human rights friendly. Uh Which countries? Just curious. Because, again, like somewhere you're not allowed to talk about your localized New York City issues with other countries, but then they have a platform for this UN, which is some global operation that's kind of like a secret, nobody knows how it's run if you're not part of its segregated, whatever, invitational. Uh, and more racially uh, integrated. Issues she believes can only be solved in this space. It is still the one place. Right, yeah, is that your segregated black issues can only be solved in this global operation that you're running within a nation that has some other ideal and has some other issue going on that is not being spoken of in the right way because it's actual passionate leaders that were chosen as mouthpieces are actually industrial lobbyists for a completely different effect and a different outcome and a different result. 
were 193 countries, all of these flags, where we can come together and find commonality, and discuss our differences, and find solutions. So are those the 193 targets to take out in, in its entirety? I'm just curious, for the indigenous population of this area is being replaced by something that these 139 agreement, they have agreement with, and they seem to care very little about the preservation of the personal safety rights of people that look like me and my children. I mean, it's been proven by the way my parents were treated, by the way I was treated, and how my children have been treated in the same time frame. I mean, we've been withheld from education, from opportunity, from, like, participation. And this wouldn't have been my stance if I wasn't forced to observe and to go through the living reference in catalog that I've documented and I've been through. It would have been a very different conversation had it been actually an integrated process and not some segregated secret war that is purposely targeting hunting and herding a very specific genetic look. It is the only place that we can do that. And one of the if it's the only place, then why was I never invited to join the conversation, to join at a respectable, manicured, and kept with my hair done and skirts that I prefer to wear as a uniform in some fashionable way, rather than the rags that I'm forced into in this biohazardous toxic, whatever, which is like the only level